AirDNA just released the most profitable markets in the USA. And I am going to do a detailed review and analysis of it, including sharing my opinions. We're gonna go through the methodology. How are these markets appearing? Why is number one, number one? I'm going to examine a few of the markets that appear on this list. And at the very end, I'm going to give you three tips that you should be keeping in mind when you're investing in a new property, no matter basically where you're going, whether that be in the USA or internationally. Here we have the list. Some key takeaways, they're saying 2024 should be a better year than 2023. Now, in a moment, I'm going to talk about data. And there's a big warning when I talk about that. Before I get into that though, let me tell you a little bit about me. I used to work at Airbnb. And then since then, I wrote a couple best-selling books in 2018 and 2023. I do Airbnb property management. And I also am an STR investor. The last STR property that I purchased, I quadrupled the revenue from the prior owner. Regarding data and averages, I see here the year closed out with an average drop of 6.7% for RevPAR, revenue per available room. Now, that gives me hesitation. Whenever there's averages like this, the variance behind that 6.7 is giant. And if you're watching this video, you're probably going to be one of the best hosts. So I want to know, well, what about the 90th percentile? That's the top 10%. How did they do last year and the year before? I know for me personally, I consider myself in the top 10%. And last year I increased my gross revenue, top line revenue by 9% and my profit, which is after the expenses by 5% in 2023. Numbers lie. All data is inaccurate. I'm saying that as an accountant. At Airbnb, I worked as a certified public accounting in the finance department. I know numbers. Whenever you see a chart or a stat or some other data, from here on out, you should do one of two things. One, verify what's behind that number. Two, Assume it's false and do not rely on it at all. What I'm trying to say there is when you're looking at data, I want you to be the output rather than the data being the output. So when we're making investments, we take all this data in. There's nothing wrong with this list, but we don't want it to be the final point in our process. Okay, I'm gonna to go to the number one rated listing according to AirDNA. I want it to become the beginning of your process, taking in the data, how we all perceive reality is different. You perceive it different than me. And the profits lie in the details. So I wanna take in a bunch of information, process it in how I know best to process it, how, you know, my unique perspectives on reality, and then that gives me an output. You're going to do much better as a short-term rental investor if you follow that process. Before we get into the actual list, let's examine the methodology which makes up the investor score, which is how each of the properties are listed from one to 25. The rental demand is occupancy. And I can already see that we're looking at historically, we're looking at the past. Part of investing is we wanna look at the future. So again, a, a data point for sure, but I wouldn't rely on it fully. And additionally, we're talking about all available listings. But in any market, I'm not really comparing myself to all listings, I'm comparing myself to the best listing. So this number could be a little bit misleading. All right, so again, we're looking at uh, how it did last year and over the past two years. Historical, it's important to know that. If you didn't read the methodology, if the company, if this list didn't post their methodology, you might not know that. Historical is important, but future is more important. Investability score comes from taking into account the average potential rental income in that area, subtracting the average operating costs for the property. So that's a whole bunch of assumptions that we are taking at face value here if we're relying on this 100%, if this is the output. If this is the input, which is what we're doing, this is different. With investing, there's a lot of assumptions being made, a lot of assumptions. And so we're there, this AirDNA is taking a bunch of assumptions on revenue and a bunch of assumptions on operating costs, but their assumptions are gonna be different than your assumptions, than my assumptions. I love the regulations part, a huge consideration. Now, just because the market doesn't have any regulations, that actually might be a bit of a risk because they're already, they can only go downhill. They can only add regulations. As opposed to a market who's already developed regulations, well, it's less likely that there's gonna be giant swings, which is gonna giantly affect your profitability. This one also does take into consideration future regulations, which I really like. If you're an Airbnb host, I have a program online that I'm doing with about 100 students right now, Airbnb hosts from all over the world. We have a class every other week. Sometimes it's Q&A, sometimes I bring on guest speakers, sometimes I cover topics, pricing is a big one. I started it in conjunction with this book that I just published last year. If you want to join, I'm going to give a 50% discount to you. And that brings us to the list. So we got number one, Columbus, Georgia. Now we have total uh, typical home value 161, occupancy 60%, average daily rate 178, coming to an average revenue 
which I believe is gross revenue top line before the expense is 29,000. Now again, behind all these numbers, there's a huge variance. The typical home value might go down to 100, it might go up to a million. Occupancy might go up to 90%. The same with these other two numbers. Now, if we go to number two, Ellsworth, we've got a home value higher. Everything is, everything is higher here, actually. Now, something that I catch right away is, all right, we have a, the typical home value is double, pretty much exactly double, but the average daily rate is also double. So if I'm paying double for a home, I wanna make double, right, at least. But the other interesting thing is the occupancy is also significantly higher. 13% is significantly higher. By the calculations in my head, that, that doesn't add up. So let's, let's have a look here. So 60% occupancy, 365 days in a year times 0 0.6, 60%, that's 219 uh, days occupied times the average daily rate of 178. That gets 38,000. So I'm wonder now I'm wondering where that average revenue comes in. But if we come down here, so remember that 38,000, 365 days times 73% occupancy times 335, I'm getting more, that's 90,000. So that's 38,000 versus night. So I'm paying double for the home, but I'm getting, I'm getting more money. Aha, we have discovered something that those who are relying on this list as an output may have not noticed. But let's read here. Columbus features the world's longest urban whitewater course. Ah, now, I want to research more into that. Are these people, are they looking for a specific type of house? Are they coming in groups, just single per persons, or are they coming in families? Is there a micro neighborhood that they prefer? Now, the concept of micro neighborhood is something that I have developed and document in my Profitable Properties book and course, and I talk about it on, on other YouTube videos, but it is Basically, we're not investing in a market. Uh, I'm in, currently in California, we have California, and then the market might be San Francisco. But then there's micro neighborhoods, which might be North Beach or Little Italy, where I lived at many years ago. Now, even within that neighborhood, there is a micro neighborhood. You know, there's a main street, maybe on the, maybe on the west of this street is very profitable, but on the east, it's not so much. That's how detailed you want to get when you're making a very important investing decision. So I'd look into that. What I also would look into is, you know, occupancy is could be misleading because there is a whole range of occupancy, just like with all these numbers when we're taking averages. Now, I am in AirDNA's dashboard here. I'm only seeing an average occupancy rate here. I'm not seeing, I want to see the 90th percentile here. What are the best hosts doing? I'm not really worried about what the average host is doing. So let's come over to all the rooms here and we're searched, we're, we're, we're narrowed down to Columbus here and I wanna see occupancy rate and then percentile, 90th percentile. Now I wanna see a line that is actually looks like this, which is kind of bumping up at the top. Seasonality is big. I prefer all year round seasonality, all year round demand. Some hosts, by the way, prefer seasonality. They prefer working for six months, making all their money, and then the other six months, uh, they just kind of take take off. So I do like to see that line there. Let's go over to Ellsworth, Maine, which I believe has more seasonality. If we go to the 90th percentile, it looks like summer is their high season and winter drops off precipitously, and that is the slow season. This list is ordered by AirDNA Investor Score, which is made up of revenue growth, rental demand, and investability. Please note that here we have important notes. This is about the regulation. So if you see this important note, do read this and see what the regulation is, and then go, remember this is your input, go and do some further research. When we are investing in an STR, and this is so, so important, that's probably why you're watching this video, but unfortunately, that, that's not enough. It's not enough just to understand that this is an important activity because I talk with hosts way too often where they come to me and they, they essentially they made a poor investment decision because they've relied on someone else, whether that be a real estate agent, a list like this, a, a short-term rental expert, and they made a poor investment because they didn't pay attention to one metric that I favor. And that is, if I'm investing, I am insuring, I'm doing two case scenarios, worst case and best case scenario. In my best case scenario, I'm insuring that my revenue is double that of my expenses for the year. That means it's a good investment and I would proceed further with potentially buying that property. I created a video on this very topic where I break out my spreadsheet, which helps you analyze revenues and expenses. I'll put a link here if you wanna watch that. Now, the three things, there's a lot of things I consider when I'm investing, but I wanna give you three now that you can generally keep in mind no matter where you're going. Number one is a larger home is better, generally. You're gonna make more money there, why? New developments, typically studios, one bedrooms. Also, who has studios and one bedrooms? Hotels, they might even have two bedrooms. But as you get up to three and four bedrooms, you will notice basically across the board, 
that the rental demand does drop, the number of guests that is, but the rental supply drops even more, making it a good arbitrage opportunity. If you're a math guy like me, that means the rental demand, let's say, from two bedrooms to four bedrooms might drop by 15%, but the rental supply, the number of Airbnbs, might drop by 30%. Number two on the general things I'm keeping in mind is seasonality. I already mentioned that. I prefer a season that is all year round. There's demand from various groups all year round. It could be a, a snow destination. That's not an important factor here because they can have two well-developed seasons, outdoor trails, hikes, and then snowbirds. And number three, something that often is not considered is the local workforce. Are there quality cleaners in this area? Are there quality worksmen in this area? Is there an STR industry already in full force? When you're making an investment, another very important consideration is it's not passive, but it can be pretty passive if and only if you have a very solid team in place. And the main team member is the cleaner, who in my strategy, where you're self-managing, the cleaner becomes the property manager and the emergency contact, not you. That is crucial, crucial, crucial if I'm making an STR investment. If you're looking for cleaners, I recommend you go to torno.com. They have an STR cleaner marketplace. I was on the plane with a STR host. She was a real estate agent invested and she had numerous units, but she had never heard of this company, but she was complaining about how hard it is to find a quality cleaner. Turno has solved that problem. Anywhere in the US, outside the US too, but mostly developed in the US, you can find quality cleaners, pre-vetted, pre-ranked. Everything I talked about in this video, in the description, I'm gonna leave links. Till next time, happy hosting.